Hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Man, I am literally in heaven right now. It's about 68, 70 degrees outside here in LA. Uh, it's been cloudy most of the time I've been here. I think those black clouds are following me, but the sun is out right now, and it's just warming my soul right now. And I'm looking back behind me, I don't know if you guys can see it over there, but back up there is the Hollywood sign. That's right, Joe Boo Sports Report is in Hollywood. Um, and having a great time, we got everything moved in to my daughter's place, she's setting stuff up, and I can kick back and relax and get back to the work that is the Joe Boo Sports Report. You know, I wish I had more time to devote fully just to this. I, I truly envy people who can do this for a living and take it for granted that's the thing that kills me that when people get their dream job it's like meh who cares when you get something good you got to learn to hold on to it because there is nothing guaranteed in this world nothing and everything that you have can be taken away in a heartbeat you never know what is around the next corner Fortunately, there's a lot of people out there that give back, that care about others and look out for others. And one of those is my quarterback, Dak Prescott. And I'm glad to report that his original goal of 5,000 was met and they raised it to 10,000 and that has been met as well. And I've got bad news for you guys. For all of you guys who donated to getting the shirt, I didn't think it was going to be that many of you, so I thought your odds were going to be really, really good. but we're closing in on 30 people who have donated to it. So shout out to all you guys. I think it's today and tomorrow. If you make a donation, make sure that you are a Facebook friend of mine or you know, send me a request because then you can see that on the site. In fact, if you go to Dak Prescott Stand Up to Cancer and watch the video and look at the link, um, when you go down, it'll say, you know, you and your friends had have gone through. And it's great to see all these people that are friends of mine on Facebook that have donated. So let me read the list of what I have right now and make sure that I haven't missed anybody. If I have, email me again. Um, send me a text message uh, or send me a Facebook message. Hell, put up a smoke signal back there. You know, I'll just, just make sure I get you on the list because you've all done some great things here. So we got Ray Solis, we got Miss Jackie, we got Mark Sampson, we got Lee Sable, we got Joseph Hartley, we got Anthony Pasca, I, you know I messed it up, Gorillamo Modelo, I know I messed that one up too, Buck Payton, <clears throat> Derek Jones, Michael Jacks, Daniel Bowman, Richard Yancey, Bruce Durham, uh, Maria A, I'm sorry, Marino, Mario A. Tavosky, Richard Normus, Yvonne, Jimmy Viles, Stephen, Stephen, I, you didn't leave me your last name, Adam uh, Chrisman, Stuart Morrison, uh, Bruce Thickpin, Richard Bloom, and Joey Cronister, and Devin Frost. So those are the names that I have right now um, on here. And make sure if I didn't and you donated to it, that you email me at cowboysmark94 gmail.com. So, Back to our Cowboys, who this week are doing all of the team visits and stuff uh, with up to 30 potential draftees. And they've been bringing in basically everybody but quarterbacks. Um, we've had tight ends. We've had safeties, <clears throat> defensive linemen, linebackers, wide receivers. So they are covering, uh, and we're going to have a running back in, covering all bases of players that they're interested in. And make no mistake, more times than not, guys that have been drafted by the Cowboys have come in for the visit. So when you pay attention to the guys they look at, because they are clearly, they're, they're not trying to do smoke and mirrors here. They really want to get to know these guys before they make a big investment in them. And speaking of big investments, probably one of the worst deals that were out there, and this is where free agency kills you, um, is when teams make bad deals for guys. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made bad deal with Gerald McCoy. Gerald McCoy, don't get me wrong, Gerald McCoy is a great player. He's six foot four, 300 pounds, plays the three technique defensive tackle, 
has had 54 and a half sacks in his career, 297 sacks, excuse me, tackles, okay? He's 31, he's getting up there, but even last year he had six sacks as a tackle, not a defensive end, mind you, a tackle. And what do I always tell you about defensive tackles and uh, nose guards? They're not there to get the sacks. They're not there to get the tackles. They're there to occupy space, and if opportunity comes around, you get it. Their job is to get that push in the middle. The guys that get all the glory, the defensive ends, and the outside linebackers, and the linebackers. If the defensive tackle is doing his job, occupying space, pushing the pocket, okay, then it's like a trash compactor closing up on the quarterback. And as he starts feeling those walls close in, that gives the opportunity for that defensive end to get out there and swat the ball away. It gives an opportunity for that quarterback to have to hurry up and throw before he wants to and throws that pick. It gives good things to the defense. And make no mistake, where the Cowboys failed on defense is getting takeaways. We were 17th last year, better than we've been the last couple years, but since 2014, we have not been anywhere close to the top 10. 2014, the defense wasn't great except for one thing, and that was taking the ball away. And what that does for your team is it gives them more opportunities for the offense. Your offense, you give them two more times to try and score, guarantee they're going to score at least one of them. It's going to increase your points level. A takeaway can be as much as a 14-point swing in a game and can be a game changer because team's playing. Okay, we know. Team's going to get the ball on the 20, 25-yard line. We know how to attack that. All of a sudden, your defense is on the sidelines there, relaxing, getting some Gatorade and stuff. The coach is talking to them about what just happened and everything else. And bam, defense on the field. That moment right there, because you are rushed, you are not ready for it, is the advantage to the offense. And that's when you go all the way. You go deep. You air it out because they're not going to be prepared for it. And that's key. And all of that to me, in my mind, as I always, always preach, comes from the defensive line. Look at some of the teams out there. Some of the great teams out there that have done damage. Why have they done damage and won Super Bowls? It was that defensive pass rush. If you've got a great pass rush, then you, my friends, have something special. Because that makes the job easier for the linebackers to scrape and make plays. It's that much easier because the cornerbacks don't have to hold up for five, six, seven seconds. And Gerald McCoy, as a defensive tackle in that rotation, you start looking at that and you start saying to yourself, if we can get that guy, if we can do a one-year deal like we've done with some of these other guys, he comes in, plays well, guess what? We can let him go get a compensatory pick. You're renting him. Now, here's the problem. And I told you guys this morning this, that currently the Dallas Cowboys only have six and a half million dollars left in the cap. And somebody said I'm an idiot. And I love it when people tell me I'm an idiot. I love it when they tell me I'm stupid, don't know what I'm talking about. But understand, because they're like, how is that possible? We had, you know, $47 million to start out with. Yeah? Well, guess what? Twenty and a half of it's gone to Demarcus Lawrence right there. Bam! Just like that. Just like that. You went from 47 to 26-5. And then you got your Randall Cobb, okay? Then you got your Robert Quinn, you know. You got your Jason Witten. Now you saved a little bit of money with Sean Lee, but still, understand? That money's been dwindling. They've been working on bringing in more and more talent. So it behooves the Cowboys to get some of these deals done. If they work on Demarcus Lawrence and get that one done, they can go ahead and save some money on this year's cap and kick it off till next year where they'll have a bigger kitty to work with. You go ahead and take care of Amari Cooper. Get him to a long-term deal. Give him a bunch of guaranteed money. Boom. You can reduce him from almost $14 million to about 8 or 9 creating some more room. And then you look at getting Gerald McCoy. Gerald McCoy realizes, after making $114 million in his career, realizes that I got enough money. I want to go someplace where I have an opportunity to win. This is what the New England Patriots do well. They take a guy. Look, man, you've been paid. You need to resurrect your career. You want an opportunity for a ring. And they bring him in. They rent him for a year and they let him walk. And that's what the Cowboys are beginning to learn to do. 
And you can do that with Gerald McCoy. Now, I'm not saying that this is the way to do it, but you have to look at all things and all angles when it comes to football. Football is cold-hearted. Football doesn't give a damn. It doesn't give an F. The bottom line is the bottom line. And what you have to honestly look at in every situation is, I may love this guy, man. I, he's like family. But you have to look at it and say, if I can bring in this guy, he's better. And if I let that one go, I can save some money. It's hard. Because when you look at somebody like a Tyrone Crawford, who has played through injuries, who's been there all along and everything else, you look and say, I can save me a big chunk of money on Tyrone Crawford. And I can bring in Gerald McCoy. Now, this is what you have to ask yourself. Is Gerald McCoy at this point better than Tyrone Crawford? And if you can get him for what you saved on Tyrone Crawford, do you do that move? And this goes back to what I was saying about football. Is it's cold hearted. You want players to be drafted by the Dallas Cowboys and to retire as Dallas Cowboys. But those days are gone. When I went out to eat this morning with my daughter, I had breakfast. The waiter was a nice guy. He came up and brought the bill up. He said, you know, I was going to give you a discount. He said, but I'm a New England Patriots fan. Yeah, those guys. But I said to him, you know, the thing about your team is, there's no superstars on that team. They don't worry about paying somebody or saying, we got to hold on to that guy. We can't win without that guy. They let him walk. They get compensation. They get draft picks. They make trades. They constantly keep the team young with guys that are hungry for something. And that's the lesson that I think the Dallas Cowboys are looking at and beginning to learn and emulate. And that's where you start looking at some of the positions and say, that's $10 million over here on that guy. If I spend eight over here on this guy and he gets me a couple more sacks, and if he does that, I can get a pick in return for him. You have to evaluate football with your head and not your heart. So with, with Tampa Bay wanting to get rid of Gerald McCoy, Gerald McCoy not showing up for workouts. And if you're saying that you're all in, your biggest bang for your buck, I'm telling you, is that defensive line. You get a bunch of crazed dogs out there after Carson Wentz, after Eli Manning, after whoever the hell the Washington Redskins does. It don't matter who the Red Case Keenum, butt fumble, I don't care who they put out there. They will all piss their legs you'll get the victories and you'll go into the playoffs with some momentum and hopefully a home field advantage. I'm Mark Holmes. I'm so ready for football season. It's not even funny. I'll see you soon.